Hello, hello, everybody. Jesus Christ, that didn't even count as a boss fight last time. <laughs> For a moment, I thought it was. But hello, we are continuing with more Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity and just... Just... Everything happened last time. Everything got connected. Everything just went terribly. <laughs> We got catfished, essentially, by Muna, who apparently is just the human assassin out here killing humans left, right, and center. Got separated from Locke, so that's going to be fun. Uh. So, yeah, we're going to basically see what happens next. Wait a second. Audio. Luckily, I just started it. How dare you? You update one thing, and the decides, ah, I'm gonna fuck with you. That's weird that updates do that. Not to mention, I think the thing that did that was my graphics drivers. I updated my graphics drivers, and then it's just like, hey, you know, uh, your OBS, we're gonna change your audio settings. Like, why? Your graphics settings. I don't know, the, 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 the world is weird. But yeah, Hydragon is a good guy. He seems like a very good guy. I'm gonna have to remember how to do his voice. Hmm. <laughs> And yeah, again, separated from Locke. Kirim is apparently trying to bring the end of the world, because like, well, I saw the end of the world in a vision. Guess I gotta bring it about. World is crazy. But let us continue. The story so far. The one who summoned Neon to the Pokemon world was really Hydreigon. A mysterious object called the Bitter Cold threatens to destroy the Pokemon world. Hydreigon wants Neon a human to destroy the bitter cold. Very concise there. The next morning. Guess we woke up early to move along. Let's see if I can do the voice again. Cutting through the grasslands should be the quickest way to post Tom. But it will still be a long and tiring walk. You're constantly floating, unless you're always standing on your tippy toes. You and your friends used the intercards to go to the Great Glacier, didn't you, Neom? That's right. The bitter cold lies within the Great Glacier. Inside that structure, Kirim called the, gl gl uh, called the Glacier Palace. To get there, we'll probably need help from Umbreon and Espeon. That's why Hydragon and I decided to go to Paradise. I'm still worried about Locke, of course. But I have to believe that Locke has made it back to Paradise... I have to keep moving. The writer in me is screaming, something terrible has happened to Locke. My optimist is like, hey, this is a Pokemon game, even though this goes kind of dark sometimes. Maybe Locke did make it. Who knows? At the same time, though, we did kind of go around and tell everybody, hey, Hydrogen's a bad guy. So this might be awkward. Let us set off, then. Let us go to paradise. And hopefully not die. Cutting through this savannah should be the quickest way to post town. Let's go ahead. We're off to paradise. This is some nice music that's playing. I guess I'll... Might as well... Like, uh, bring out just enough money to buy a single vitamin if we find a Kecleon in there. Let's manage our things. I guess we'll put Gravel Rock away. Oh yeah, I need to be- I need to remember! Oh, oh no! Monster houses exist! Uh, definitely need to remember my multi- like, my ultimate room attack move. This is some music that's playing, though. Some music! Are you ready to go ahead? Yes! Alright, big ugly. 
I really should disable your roar. It is amusing, but still. All right, you just annihilate him. But yeah, we're gonna turn off your... Why do you have a thing? What is that? What is that icon, I wonder? But yeah. Uh, wrong place. Uh, moves, I believe. Then we come over here. I tell you, no more roar. Amusing, but... Uh... Okay, that was weird. I don't think I ever hit that, but it it changed my bottom screen from like uh my map to just random things. I don't think I ever hit that button before. Weird. How dare you? Quit trying to giga drain me. You're just very mean. Da 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 da. -da. This is some very nice music. Again, the one thing that I feel like is that GTI has kept up the tradition of just brilliant music. And I'm very happy for it. I'm going to have to grab the soundtrack. Because this is amazing. Brilliant. Oh, so this is where the stairs are. But I want to kill some Pokemon and grab some items. Again, I'm still worried about Locke. I'm still worried about my partner. Bad things can happen. Because again, the story has kind of been hinting and poking at like, ha ha ha, something bad could be happening with Locke. Maybe he's not as happy as he initially, uh, like, made himself seem. And now we're separated, so bad things can happen. <laughs> so I'm just very, very worried that the... Considering that the game just went immediately, oh, by the way, Muna is the enemy here to kill you. Just like, no warning. Anything could happen now, it feels like. Anything's on the table. How long to beat said that there were... Why is there just a random Azuril here in Nightmare World? In a savanna. Jerk. How dare you. Yeah, I was back to my thoughts. Because, uh, how long to beat said that, uh, the main story should take about 24 hours. We're 20 hours in. Maybe I, like, uh, wibbly wobbled around longer than... ...usual. So who knows. So either we're closer to the end than I assumed... Or how long to beat lied to me. So it does feel like we are ramping up to the climax. Really, the only things left would be... Going back to Post Town. And, like, uh, meeting up with Paradise. Realizing Locke hasn't gotten there. Pres when did, how did I become confused? Well, that's just me. But back to my thoughts. It feels like the only things left on the... Well, that's rude. It's a spiky trap. The Pokemon that steps on this trap will take damage. So it's the chestnut trap again. But yeah, for my thoughts, there's only like two things really left to do. More than likely, we're gonna get to paradise... And they'll be like, oh, but Locke hasn't come back. And then we'll go, oh, no. Hydrogen will be like, hey, we have to go defeat the Bitter Cold. And I'll just be like, no, I have to go save Locke. What if Bitch Muna has the boy? And so we'll probably... 
Why is he just ta Okay, I guess frozen makes you take no damage. That's a bit weird. Okie dokie. But yeah. Hydrogen will be like, hey, we have to go and destroy the bitter cold. And I'll be like, but I have to go save uh, the boy. I have to go save Locke. Muna probably has him. Or he's still running. And then it'll be like the emotional moment of Locke. Then we'll probably go and uh, after defeating Muna and saving the boy. Jesus Christ, that just went on for eternity. After saving the boy and taking down Muna, we'll probably go to Glacier Palace to fight Kirim and destroy the bitter cold. Ah, even confirmation. I'd say there's a little more than four hours going at this point. So how long to beat was indeed correct. Mean. So we should be able to finish this this stream, maybe. Or if worse comes to worse, we'll like uh get close and then maybe begin whatever post game there is afterwards. Hmm. This could be nice because it heals. But do I want to get rid of anything? Because Leaf Blade is good for damage. Vine Whip is good for also damage and just overall coverage. So I guess we'll won't do that. I just had an idea to make different styles of stances for natures, but someone already did that, so damn. You can always do your own take on it. When in doubt, you could always, like, there are multiple ways to execute on an idea. So I'd say do it anyway. It's good practice to have inspiration go forth and execute on an idea, even if other people have already done it. Well, that's just me. Now I'm wondering how many streams it took me to beat Explorers of Sky's, like, main game, main story. Because I know that it took me about nine streams to do Rescue Team. But at the same time, like, uh, Rescue Team also, like, blah, blah, blah. I think I did shorter streams. So I guess it could be, like, overall comparable. And if we are entering into the end, again, feels like we have to go save Locke, have an emotional moment, beat Muna, then head to Glacial Palace. But it feels like there's still so, like, enough to go around that we're not... Super duper, well, that's mean. You destroyed $200, you bastard. Wait, it just feels like there's enough left that... Four hours seems kind of short for there to be all that's left. Like, there's still Keldeo out there. And his stuff with Verizion, unless it's just... Oh, ah, my bad, still waking up because of time zones, but I meant to say it would probably be about five to six-ish hours. Hmm. So we'll probably go for three hours, so that way there's a good finale segment. But thank you for the information. A sandstorm has blown in. Except for rock, ground, and steel Pokemon, all Pokemon will gradually take damage. Regardless of a Pokemon's type, none of the Pokemon probably will recover HP while doing it in a storm. What the fuck? I hate random confusion attack. How are you? Okay, fuck off with your move to just do shit like that. God damn. You are a nightmare bitch.
Confusion is stupid. Die already. Attack that can just confuse you if you're in the same room is bullshit. Straight up. Ah, we're just gonna- we're not dealing with this sandstorm. Let's get out of here. <laughs> There's a lot of story and good music left to still enjoy, which I am happy to hear. Because, again, considering, like, uh, how condensed and tied together all the story is, it definitely feels like, uh, I would like to wake up again. I'll cheer you on as you annihilate him. It just feels like uh, there's only segments left. All I hope is that uh, the story that is told in the remaining time is very, very good. Is all that I want. Very nice story time. You know what I'm poisoned, this world is mean, we're gonna move on. Die. And we'll take your chests. Damn it. All these traps are here to hurt me. Literally their purpose. Get critical. But at least the story so far is like really gripping me. I'm very much just like, oh no, where is the boy? Where is Locke? Does Muna have him like a bitch? That makes me wonder if, like, any other humans have come to this world and, like, made friends. Max Elixir, Max Elixir, Dino. I was hoping for vitamins. Yeah, if, like, if any other humans have come to this world and, like, made friends, and they're like, I... Then again, maybe Muna did, like, some kind of weird psychological thing to me, because even I initially went, hmm, maybe I should not tell anybody and uh, go f save Muna myself, which seemed very odd. So I don't know. Oh yeah, I just remembered. We also have to remember, or like, uh, discover what the hell the, uh, floating lights actually are. Because even though I have my theories, it is yet to be uh, said one way or another what they are. They intentionally chose fl floating golden orbs, so much scared. Much scared. Much fear existing. I have so many Max Elixis. So many! I mean, I guess I shouldn't get angry that I have so many... Max elixirs, considering I only have moves to deal damage in this game because the basic attack doesn't exist anymore. Basically. It is essentially a waste of a button press and turn. Weird choice, okay. <laughs> Baton pass, I shall fly away. Uh, now I see. <laughs> Baton pass so you could bring in your buddy. Get dragon breath, idiot. Because, yeah, now that we're getting to, like, finale territory, I feel like the emotional gut punches are going to start reeling in. Which I do gotta say, a little disappointing that there, like, uh, haven't been as many emotional moments just yet. Because, like, I remember one moment that really was emotional to me, like, in Explorers, was the, uh... 
the time where, uh, like, the hero and partner were in the, uh, dark future. And... In the Hands of Fate started playing. I believe when the hero tried to cheer up the partner. That was a very nice moment. I wish that we had a few more moments like that. Kind of like I wish ha we had a few more moments, kind of like how, uh, buh buh buh, how Locke, like, spoke to us at night that one time. Just a few more moments of that would have been perfect. Then again, maybe they'll stuff all of them in up here leading up to the finale. Or maybe they'll even have a few awesome moments in post-game. Because I don't know how long the post-game is. We'll still give the post-game a shot if it interests me. It all just depends if the post-game is more Explorers of Sky and less Rescue Team. Because I enjoyed enough of the post-game from Rescue Team, but it was mostly like... A little bit of Spinda hoping to see, like, the Rainbow Feather from Ho-Oh. Or, like, uh, going with uh, the boy Gengar on multiple adventures to save, like, Gardevoir. That was cool. So, like, more Manaphy and Cresselia arcs. Less... Go here, fight Legendary. I want a story and emotional incentive to going on adventures. Then again, out of any of the games that I, of the Mystery Dungeon games that I've played so far, this is the one that's most likely for me to, like, do post-game that is just, hey, go here, do this, because the gameplay is super, super good. So, like, out of all of them, I would be more willing to do the basic bitch kind of post-game. That's like, go here, do this, random fetch quest. Go, <laughs> we're sending a hit squad to, to get this legendary. <laughs> I'm sending in <laughs> the suicide squad. <laughs> But we'll just have to wait and see what the post-game has to offer. Sure. I guess the enemy dropped a thing. <laughs> the Kecleon teleported to me! And I'm just like, sure, whatever you say, I don't want no smoke. <laughs> Unfortunately, this game has a very short post-game. It's only about one, two, maybe one or two streams for story content. Well, that's fine enough. Kind of wish that there would be a bit more, but it also depends. Because one to two streams of quality post-game is still good. It became sunny. Fire moves will do more damage, while water moves will do less. And regardless of Pokemon type, it's so sunny we can't heal normally. You, you stupid motherfucker. Two gold bars. Nice. You are a bitch. You are a motherfucker. You are the epitome of evil. Teeter Dance should just not be a move. I don't like it. Teeter Dance is too much of a bullshit move, if you ask me. Especially since confusion lasts forever. It's already in bad enough that they can target a single Pokemon and be like, I inflict confusion on you. But for the enemy to just go, hey, you know what? Fuck you. You, <laughs> All of you are confused. Kind of mean. You go kill him. I think I can handle you. You can splash all you want, you're still gonna die. Especially because randomly you Azuril, oh yeah, it's fucking sunny out, I can't heal because this game is a bastarding. What? 
I am a grass type. If anything, sunny conditions should make me more likely to heal. It's super... I am photosynthesizing out my ass here. Oh, but no, it's so sunny. I'm wilting, I guess. But yeah, the music is so good. The one downside to starting from where I did, and, or stopping where I did last time, is I'm just awaiting for more story. My vision like, more story. <laughs> Alms for the story. <laughs> Aha! My leaf blade has evolved slightly. My level 4 leaf blade. I shall use it to cut down my enemies. Take their loot. For myself. All of me. I am all of me. Call me Shadow the Snivy. Introducing the next Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game. The one where there's guns. All right, there's just a, a parade of motherfuckers. <laughs> Hello, Neon. I did a lot in Heart Gold. I need to get around to playing those ones someday. Presumably after Black and White and Black and White 2. If I remember correctly... I think there might be, like, a level curve issue with those games, but it's, uh, a lot of people still really like them. So we'll have to give it a shot someday. <laughs> still, I like the different stances. And that's why I say, pursue those stances. Make them your own. Become the stance god. God, the music is so good. Hey, you have vitamins this time? Where did all the vitamins go? Every single time I ran into them before, it's like, vitamins, vitamins, vitamins. Now that I bring money, you suddenly do not stock that which I want? How dare. Not to mention, like, can't we tell the uh, these Kecleon, like, hey, you know the Kecleon of Post Town? Since you're all merchants, can you pass on a message, please? You and your magical ways to summon armies. Why can't we just hire you to go fight M Muna for us? It was like, hey, there's a big bad Pokemon. If we gave you money, will you go fight them? Now, what we need to do is we need to lure Mana into a dungeon with a Kecleon. Get her to accidentally destroy some of his merch and watch him just go ape shit. That is how we'll win the day. We lure Kecleon to cure him. And we have him ask, like, hey, what's gonna happen to all of my... all of my wares if the world is destroyed? It's like, oh, all your wares will go away too. So you're trying to steal from me, are you? Get him, boys! The Kecleon Mafia descend upon cure him. You're gonna totter whistle, aren't you? Okay, good. Kill. <laughs> I managed to get the shiny leaf crown for Arceus. Now Arceus is a flower girl. He's the ultimate hippie. I guess it ate the warp seed for the pure seed. I was never going to use them anyway. He's like, I'm going to eat your stuff. Woo! He took the edible. Quit eating my shit. And then you just run away. You motherfucker. What orbs do I have? We have a bunch of slumber orbs, so we're gonna use slumber orb. 
And then, team attack, ladies and gentlemen. Now oh, that doesn't really matter. Team attack time! Explosion! Get out of here. Get out of here. I grew to level 35 by annihilating a room of enemies. Team attack is such a good addition to this game. Well, that's just mean. Stop. Motherfucker. It's like every single tile that didn't have an item has a bullshit. Motherfucker! here and fight my friend, dipshit. Oh, uh, oh, the music gets to come back because that was all of the Monster House music. I'm gonna go ahead and drink. In fact, let me see. You definitely did too. There we go. We got enough max elixirs and storage to be able to tank that loss. Oh, hey, gravel rock just on the ground. We need to sneak up on the on the frickin' Lilligans. Lest they do teeter dance. Which is bullshit. God, I just I can't wait for more story. That is what I desire. <laughs> That's what all these dungeons are. They're there to, like, wind the coil of getting you ready for the pain and the misery of the of incoming story. I still want to know what's up with Keldio, though. Because obviously he didn't make it to... Well, maybe he did make it to the bitter cold, and Kirim was like, hmm, if I told them that he did make it to the, the inner sanctum, then bad things will happen. So I'm gonna say that he didn't, actually. Even though, like, uh, it is confirmed by Verizian that it was the same hoof riding. Still hilarious hoof riding. So in the end, he still had to have gone there and decided to lie because of the evil that the bastarding bit of cold made him feel in his heart. But I'm certain that we'll get all that explained. Eventually. I wonder how much damage the gravel rocks do. Apparently this is the floor of money. I wonder if the Kecleons of Dungeons, like, take money from dungeon Pokemon. I guess it depends on, like, what the dungeon Pokemon are in this game, because usually they're not ever, like, ex ex explained. In... Uh, Rescue Team, early on, like, Butterfree said, oh, Pokemon have been driven mad uh, or into a rage by the earthquake that created the crevasse that Caterpie fell into. And that explains, like, why. Well, that's just very mean. They, like... That would explain why those Pokemon were getting up in arms. Doesn't explain all the dungeons, but still. In Explorers, it's kind of implied that there are Pokemon that just 
hang out and live within the areas of dungeons. Like, uh... The Menectric and Luxio tribes, depending on the version of Explorers you played. In this game, I don't think it's really explained at all. I think it's just mentioned, maybe, once or twice. Like, oh, they've, like, I think they've slightly referred to Pokemon in the dungeons once, but I forget. It's just interesting to think about. Because, <laughs> and it's just funny that pretty much every single mystery dungeon game just kind of sidesteps it. As a topic, they're like, yeah, there are Pokemon in the dungeons. You can recruit them. We're not going to really explain them at all. I just find that amusing. God damn it. How dare you try to s charm a sleeping Pokemon. That's not very consensual of you. Level 16. How many floors are there? 18? 20? We're totally gonna get that. Max Elixir is our first, like, dropped item from these Pokemon, aren't we? Also, we're just getting a ton of money from this, from these dungeons now. I could buy all the Reviver Seeds that I want. I probably should have been buying more Reviver Seeds. The difficulty has kind of ramped up, but then at the same time, we've kind of been schmickety schmacked around by the plot for a bit. You are going to die by the power that is Try. You know what? Actually, how m I wonder. Uh, it doesn't tell you how many you have back in normal place. But at the same time, we probably have more max elixirs than we do Orin berries. But I shall drink it anyway. Nom. I'm just enjoying this. I need to draw more Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Huh, Scofflins. What you do. Boost critical hit rate. I don't really care, but... Again, we have tons of... Max Elixirs. Might as well give them the boy, and then we can... Drink. Please don't. Good, die. No Tita dancing for you, you asshole. What kind of political ploy would that be? It's like, here's our exotic dancer for all of the foreign dignitaries. A lilligant. No, they're gonna Tita dance! And then the assassination started. Ow. <laughs> I need to draw more in general myself. Same. My brain has been in a very meh bleg state where it doesn't want me to do anything, really. I need to just sit down and force myself to, like, begin the activity to at least try and get some things done. And not force myself to do too, too much. So you need... I just need to balance the act of not inflicting burnout on myself, but at the same time pushing myself through whatever creative blocks are stopping me from doing the things I want to do. It is a careful balance. Like, I need to get back to writing my stories, both original and fanfic. At least I have come up with, like, a brand new, like, story idea. I think I mentioned it last stream. A story of dragons. Just need to flesh out the characters and everything. Flesh out the world as well. Because the one big thing that makes... 
stories really good is if the worlds really stick. It's like character, story, world, and all of them are varying levels of equally important. It is a weird thing. You will die horribly. And hello, hello. We are currently trying to not die as we try to make our way back to paradise, and I presume again that we'll need to go and save Locke from Muna after we get back to paradise. Lots of scope lenses all of a sudden. Yeah, because we're in the final stretch. The final, like, two-ish streams worth of content, motherfucker. Go left, go left. Yes, you are a smart hydrogun. <laughs> it's okay, take your time. That's exactly what I plan on doing. Because I plan on probably having this stream be three-ish hours. So that there's a decent enough amount of, like, end of the game to fill out another stream. And then we'll start whittling away at whatever post-game this game has. I might look up a guide just to, like, plot out the content chunks of, like, okay, how much content, like, is this segment of post-game? And just see about it. So that we don't end up with a uh, end of end of uh, explores a sky post game, because I did enjoy that post game, but I overestimated how much of the content there was left near the end. Because again, like, I went into it expecting, like, oh, there's this much left, and there's like, actually, they split up the the Cresselia into two segments. I'm just like, oh, well, that's not good at all. Vastly overestimated the amount of content left at Explorers near the end. Again, like, I think my one major gripe with Explorers of Sky was that there wasn't a, like, post-game credit sequence of, like, you did everything and you have, like, an emotional moment with the partner and it ends on a secondary credit sequence to let you know you did all the major post-game. I think that would have been nice. <laughs> well, more story time! Exactly what I want! Will we have made it back to post-town? Well, no, we're just out of the savannah. This appears to be the end of the savannah. Things should get much easier once we get out of here, I imagine. Let us hurry onward. I wonder if we'll run into Locke. Ah, shit. I was going to say, I wonder if we're going to run into Locke on our way to paradise. But again, the writer in me is thinking we're going to get to paradise. We're going to be like, oh, you're back. And then realize Locke hasn't gotten there. Voice of Life Hydrogen will be like, you have to go destroy the bitter cold and save the world. It's like, but I have to go save my friend! <laughs> Do you think you could run away that easily? How'd you even get ahead of us? That voice is... It's unmistakable. It's the Pokemon that attacked Espeon. Drill! Drill! Ah! Exa drill! <laughs> You're just naive if you thought you could run from us. Hmm. I was expecting such antics. I never imagined we could run away without any interference, but... You would be naive, the naive one, to think we would be easily defeated here. <laughs> well, that's probably true. Neon alone is bad enough, but with you here as well, Hydragon, we really are at a disadvantage. So this time, just this time, we won't fight you. We're passing along a message. They have Locke. And if you don't come alone, Neon, we're gonna kill him. My message. We have Locke. What? Locke is... 
<laughs> He's in our pause at this very moment. At the same time, they could be lying. They're full of shit a lot of the time. If you wish to save him, why don't you go mosey on over to the whole hills? If you don't, well, who knows what might happen to poor Locke. I'll leave that up to your imagination. Later. <laughs> How'd they teleport away? Do they have badges? We'll be waiting for you. You'd better come rescue him. <laughs> Mo. What low-down, dirty Pokemon. So Moon and the others, they're waiting for us in a place called the Whole Hills, right? What? You can't be... You can't be thinking of going. It's obviously a trap. We do not even know if they really have him. If Locke was really captured, if we go and we find that Locke is not there, and then you are defeated, what will happen to this world? I understand that you're worried about him, but I'm sure this is another of Muna's lies. So we should surely should not go. For now, just believe that Locke must have made it safely back to paradise. And let us also make our way there. Of course, I'm aware that it's probably a trap. Locke might not have even been caught at all. But if they really do have him, if it's true, then Locke will... Where are you going? It doesn't matter if it's a trap, I have to go. What? You actually want me to tell you where the whole hills are? Even if it's a trap. If there's a chance that Locke needs me, I can't just ignore it. He's my best friend. No, there's no way I can allow it. You must not go there. But... No matter how much I protest, you will not listen, will you? You're going to go anyway. Ah, I knew it. I understand, but what a mess this is. But it may be an odd reaction, but I also feel a bit relieved. What? In the brief time I have spent with you, I believe I have come to understand you. What kind of person you are, Neon. So even when I said we should not go to your friend's rescue, the truth is... But even my own heart rebelled at those words. I knew that you would not listen to my objections. I knew that you would say we must go to save him. I know it's the right thing to do, I just needed you to talk me into it. I'm so glad that you are who you are, Neon. I don't wish to take too much of a detour, but your lock is very important to you, isn't he? Well, you know, every single time I ship the hero and partner. Just as the world is so very important to me, the voice of life, they are both irreplaceable. Let us go and save your friend. Let us go save Locke. I will assist you. Hydrogen. I like that. <laughs> it was just like, he knew objectively. We really should go destroy the bitter cold. It is the best thing we should do. But at the same time... Uh, <laughs> beyond here, you'll find the whole hills. These hills are dotted with countless holes. Ah, so we're in a kindergarten. I can't believe that the Diamond Authority came here too. And from the smallest to the greatest, they are all linked by caves. There will be plenty of hiding spots for our enemies. It's the perfect place for an ambush. I know I've already warned you, but this is undoubtedly a trap. I think Muna and the others are most likely lying in wait at the peak, but... It's also possible that as we make our way through the dungeons here, we will run into some little challenges from them. Let us be extremely careful. This is some nice music, too. Alright, deposit... Good music. Very uh, <laughs> epic music for us just doing my inventory cleaning.
so many escape orbs. Guess I'll keep a roll call orb just in case. And let's see, do I have any like reviver seeds in here? I'll take one more just to be safe. Onwards we go. We have to save luck. Or just like anni annihilate Muna while we're here. I would imagine the other heads could talk, but uh, due to the dex lore, middle head uh, bit the other heads. Mm. Then again, this isn't literally a hydrogen. It is the voice of life pretending to be one. So that could also affect the heads not talking because it's the voice of life being a single consciousness with a multi-headed form. And could also be... But I, 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 took that, that, I took that move off. Why did you put it back on? How dare you? I guess you reset every floor. Or like every dungeon. But that would be interesting if like Hydrogen's other heads like argued with, with him. Like they were the one, like the voices saying, we have to go destroy the better cold, but we also need to cherish all life. Like, that would be an interesting thing. Kind of like how Dodrio and stuff, their heads also, like, argue and stuff. And now I'm reminded of the, uh, <laughs> the Pokedex line for, uh, uh what is it? Uh, what's the Doduo, but three-headed? I completely forget. I think one, uh, ba 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 One, what is it called? Dex entry is worded. Oh, 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 game, why am I missing a lot? It's fucking tackle, you bitch. It's not even like it's a move that has a low hit chance, you motherfucker. But like, uh... Like, uh, the Doduo evolution in a, in one, like, a dex entry. There's a line that says, it's just like, this Pokemon has, uh, beyond just three heads, has three of other things as well. Which, of course, people take to <laughs> be implying the worst thing possible. Go kill him. The fact that this motherfucker can... like, totter dance multiple times in a row the moment that you're free again. So annoying. Uh, Dodrio. Yes, that's it. For some reason, my brain was stuck on Doug Trio, And it's just like, no, that's not the right one. Just, just similar enough that my brain was just like, no, it can't be. And they're from the same generation. Again, really liking the music. Again, I'm just really enjoying this game. Aside from all the totter dances. No! Alright, quiver dance. Not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, buff yourself up, but then never attack us. Definitely do that all the time, please. Now this makes me wonder if there's like an in you like a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Pokedex. Like, what is with all the missing? Fuck off. I hate it. I don't think I got like blah blah blah. Sand attacked? But you never know. My my memory is terrible, quite terrible sometimes. Yeah, I think it would be interesting if there was, like, a mystery dungeon game where there was, like, a research is like, I am trying to make a compendium of, like, all known Pokemon so that we can better live together in peace and harmony. And then you go off. 
and like make a Pokemon Pokemon deck. <laughs> I did already. My brain is having trouble speaking. Go out and make a Pokemon made Pokedex. And of course, you synthesis tool because you're a motherfucker. See, this is when I I wish I was still the Zorua. So that I could do, like, my AoE attack, my Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse would be so killer to have against these fucking Lilligans. The music is so good. You motherfucker. Frism. Misn't this. A frism? It's white inside. There must be a recording. Is this Mana's, like, a uh, hostage note? Frisms are incredibly rare. This is not something you would normally find simply lying around the whole hills. Then that means someone left it here on purpose. And this could either be, like, Locke's frism that he left behind, maybe. Because maybe they did the same ploy with Locke, where they sent the majority of their forces to keep an eye on Hydragun and me, and then still had somebody, like, be like, Ah, we have your friend at Whole Hills as well, to lure Locke in, maybe. And maybe he left this here as like, hey, just, I know you would never be caught, but I had to come anyway. That would be cool. Or it is Muna saying, haha, we have your friend. Here's his voice. <laughs> Hydrogen reminds me of Ghidorah. That reminds me of like the classic three-headed Ghidorah picture of just like serious, serious, utterly dopey. Neon warmed the frism. The frozen part of the frism began to produce sounds. Ah, what do you think you're doing? Lock. Didn't you reach out to Neon for help, Muna? So then why? Heh, <laughs> that was simply an act meant to trick all you fools. Neon cannot be allowed to stay in this world. That is why I tricked you into coming here to eliminate Neon. So they did trick Locke to come here as well. What do you mean Neon can't stay in this world? Ah! Crook! Quit your complaining! Just shut your trap and be a good little captive, Crook! Ah, uh, you... I think that's the end of the recording. So you were right about Locke being captured after all. You were right when you insisted that we come here. So Locke secretly recorded this message and dropped it here so we'd hear it, huh? But this frism, isn't it? Isn't it what? Neon, we don't know what kinds of traps might be waiting for us ahead. And even if there are no traps, our enemies have greater numbers. There is no doubt we will be at a disadvantage, whatever comes. We should attempt to find Locke and get him away, without being found by our enemies, or being drawn into any fights. That is the only path left to us, I believe. Let us be sure we know what we're planning to do before we move forward. But I wonder what I was thinking. Saying... Basically, he's thinking that there's something up with the... The da-da-da, it's like... Isn't this? Isn't this what? Ah, shit, burn. Let's see. I only have one health orb. Oh, do I not have... I didn't bring any heal seeds either. I'm a fool, so we'll just have to suck up the burn. Need to be careful of those bug guys from now on. Why do they? How can they inflict burn? They're a fucking bug. And we're back to this room existing. The good old top left that is nothing. But personally, I think it would have been more like 
heart touch like a uh, waste of good words like uh, heartwarming in a way if uh, the message was from Locke like intentionally where he was like hey just in case you weren't actually captured I had to come anyway just to make sure but this is just to make sure like if I'm wrong and you are safe this is for you I think that'd be cool but still we have to build up we gotta save the boy energy from the evils of the motherfucking mana. Well, while you go on to um, a rescue mission, remember to stay hydrated. Ball. Motherfucking flame burst. How is it that I've never gotten burned by those things, but it was the fucking bug that did? Get annihilated, idiot. All of these traps. How dare. Why does it have contact burn? That's so stupid. I hate burn because it cuts my fucking attack in half. And it's fucking contact. It's so stupid. Why are you a fire bug? Why do you exist in this world at all? My super effective aren't that all effective, and that's saddening to me. I should have brought more heal seeds. You know, more than zero. At the very least, I can still heal while being burned. Hi, no damage. You moron. Get whacked. Let's get out of here. Oh, Neon, you look like a latex beast or a fan OC. I don't think I've ever heard of that, so I do not know. <laughs> I don't know what those... <laughs> do I look like I know what a, P a JPEG is? That's how I'm feeling right now. I'm gonna let Hydragon take care of these guys because of their fucking contact burn! <laughs> I love the fact that the animation for Arceus' judgment goes from cr uh, the crotch of any Pokemon larger than a Pikachu. The good old funny aha uh -huh of <laughs> animations that look ever so slightly wrong because they have to make but, but it's actually especially hilarious because judgment is a specific unique attack. It's more it's more understandable when it's a random attack that many 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 different pokemon can learn so obviously there's going to be weird animation like stuff that goes along. It's just a funny aha. Uh -huh. Especially cuz there's so many Pokemon they have to worry about, too. Just the whole thing. Let us come down here and murder you. Your fury swipes aren't furious enough. Once again, not furious enough. We'll explore a little bit since we know where the... I almost said stores. They're not stores, they're stairs. What is wrong with the brain? Brain is being a bungle. Why does that always happen? It's always the... Freaking... 
warp seed with those guys. But I hate that there's multiple moves in this game that allows enemy Pokemon to eat my freaking items. It's just so annoying. Alright, <laughs> if a ton passed to another one of them. So yeah, from now on, whenever a Scoliopede exists, I'm just gonna let Hydreigon take care of it. Just slowly working towards leveling up my Vine Whip. I doubt we're gonna get to level 7 with it. Again, I don't even know what the max is. Yeah, we're just gonna leave the evolution alone. It's just sleeping there. Let sleeping evolutions lie. And the music is so good. A lot of items are just being picked up like crazy. I just realized we don't have our team attack yet, so... I'm just gonna charge along. Oh, it's because of the overworld segments! They probably reset our... Well, maybe. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Yeah, I'm just gonna let Hydra gonna annihilate you, because I don't want your contact burn to exist. Ah, but now we have our... Team attack up and ready. <laughs> I saw way too many items being picked up by enemy Pokemon for me to trust there not being a monster house in there. Oh, a health orb. That'll be, that's nice. Yeah, you keep defense curling. I'm just gonna let the, him annihilate you. I'm not gonna come to you. You're just gonna bug bite my all my items away. I'm not gonna deal with that. I ain't dealing with that at all. Do, 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 do. The music is so good. Not you. Not the impact. Burn guy, I hate you. I do think it's slightly annoying that there are so many enemies in this game where the optimal strategy is don't fight them. Let your allies fight them. But I want to do the hitting. I have to level up my moves. How am I going to win Dancing with the Stars if I'm not a magnificent dance master? I also wonder now what the average end level for, like, Mystery Dungeon games are. Like, if you play Rescue Team normally, what, like, uh, level do you average out to be at the end? And then if, like, you play Explorers, Gates to Infinity, Super Mystery Dungeon, and you play it like what you normally would, maybe do some side content, but mainly do the story what your average end level is. <laughs> and I just remember being told last stream, I believe, that Super Mystery Dungeon is apparently quite difficult. We'll have to do some... Hopefully there's good, like, uh... General gameplay so that we can do some not grinding. What's a Rugnali? Oh. I, I forgot your name. Very rude. Die. Are we killing that one guy's family? He said, they're like, oh, I have family up near there. And now we're killing them. He'll never see his family again. Serves him right. 
for that dream he had about Verizian. How dare you vine with me? I vine with back. How dare you vine with me? I vine with back. I whip my vine back and forth. For me, it was about level 40. Hmm. Now we're about around there. Guess this is the true end game after all. Hmm, stairs. Gold. I love gold. Dude, lots of gold. And then an all power orb. Oh, yeah, interesting. I'm guessing this is going to be the end. Are you ready to go ahead? Yeah, it is the peak, probably. Neom, we are near the end of our journey. We've nearly reached the top of the whole hills. Let us be careful. All right, this is a frickin' far cry encampment. Where's a sniper when you need one? Also, I just realized, this is, I think, the first time that we've ever tangibly been separated from our partner in all the Mystery Dungeon games. And we had to go to a rescue mission. How do you like being all tied up, huh? Hm, no reply, huh? Whatever, crook. Is it a double trap where actually Locke isn't taken at all? And it was somebody doing a voice mimicry? Like, maybe they have a... I don't know, a ditto or something? Hey, Lady Mana. When do you think that pesky neon's gonna appear, Croc? Maybe at night, huh? When we can't see anything coming, Croc. It is true that those two used darkness to their advantage last time. But this time may be different. I don't think even Neon believes that the same trick will work twice. Regardless... The fact that we're not seeing him makes me... Makes me wary. Even I must admit, the wit you showed in attacking the Chandular that time was... Quite clever. Compliments... Compliments from you? Please. It doesn't matter. Oh, he is here! You bullies will never be able to catch Neon. Never! Well, don't you talk big. Do you even understand the situation you're in right now, Crook? Didn't you get caught? And aren't you now at our mercy, Crook? Yeah, I did get caught. But Neon's different. You're not gonna catch Neon. It'll never happen. <laughs> I wonder about that. I guess we'll find out when Neon finally shows, won't we? But I won't be letting that fool get away again. There's no doubt Neon will try to strike where we are weakest. It may become a drawn-out battle, but... That is why we've all got to stay on our guard without fail. Got it, boss! And so, after some time... Shove him off the cliff. Ah, Croak. I'm so bored. Come on already. When are those twerps ever gonna show up, Croak? You bullies will never be able to catch Neon. Oh, enough already. I'm sick and tired of hearing the same line again and again, Croak. Just give it a rest already, would ya? Clink clatter. Huh? Was that? I think I heard something from over there. Guess I should go check it out. Huh? What's this? It's just a stupid little rock that fell down, Croak. Don't go scaring me like that. Ah! I wish we could stealth attack. All right. I managed to sneak in this far. Locke, I'm here to... Uh, what's this? A frism? They've swapped him out at some point, or... <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> It appears you've fallen for our little trick. I guess it makes sense. It was a repeat. Ah, uh, that hurt! Letting myself get hit like that ain't no fun, Croak! <laughs> you had no idea, did you? That we just recorded Locke's voice, and you were just listening to a frism. Give it up. There's no way out of here. Last time you caught us off guard by attacking our Shandular, you left us all in the dark then, but... I'm afraid it's perfectly bright out today. 
your old tricks won't work anymore. <laughs> Neon, you're not getting away. Not this time. No, oh, but wait a sec. Wasn't Neon with that annoying Hydragon fellow? Indeed. Ma'am, I cannot report seeing Hydragon anywhere. Where might he have gotten off to? Above us! Look up, Croak! Did we... Uh, maybe that's why we noted it was weird. Uh, I thought he was going to be out there saving Locke while we were taking Brunt. <laughs> Artillery fire! And just sending them scrambling. Perfect. Now I can see what's in that hole. D no! Everyone, the prisoner is escaping! Catch Neon now! Ah. Salamence. Can I have a dogfight in the air? Guess that's why they have Salamence. I swear cutscenes are like, I'll beat you, then gameplay is just flamethrower times eight, basically. Uh, uh, Hydrogen told me before we even entered the whole hills, didn't he? That these hills were full of caves, and that all the holes were connected some way or another. Locke was up on that cliff before, I'm sure of that. So now he must be wherever this cave leads. They did have it boarded up a ways, so... There he is! It's Locke. Neon? Is that you, Neon? Oh... He's tied up with some kind of rope or something. Thanks. Now I can move. Let's get out of here. God, to dead end. Drill. And then the salamence. Oh no, hydrogen. Well, we're followed by the salamence, probably. Oh, never mind. He just picks us up in his mouths. Here comes the Salamence, though. He, and he probably won't be able to carry us too long. Ha <laughs> ha! Man, these whole hills are big. <laughs> that Salamence just crashed into the floor. Here, I thought we would have to actually invade. But hey, we saved Locke. And once again, their trap failed. Ha-ha! <laughs> Suck it, Muna! <sighs> There's a cliff. Let's just do an emergency landing there, shall we? <sighs> we should be pretty safe here, at least for now. You look like you're having a pretty tough time, though. Are you okay? You even got attacked back there. Yes, I'm fine, thank you, sir. It was just a scratch, truly. I'm sure I'll be fully recovered in no time. If you'll just allow me this short rest. Though I apologize for needing a break when our enemies are still in pursuit. Uh, no, no. I'm the one who needed rescuing. I'm the one who should be apologizing! I'm so sorry to both of you. I'm really sorry that you got dragged into harm's way just because I got caught. But, thank you for saving me. Locke. Oh, but that was nothing at all, sir. Well, at any rate, you sure did a great job seeing through Muna's trap. The way she used that frism. Well, it was a good thing we were very cautious in our approach. And, of course, Neon's warning was a huge help. Neon's warning? Yeah. It was when we were halfway through the whole hills. That's what we were talking about. The frism was odd. It was that frism, you see. When I saw that Frism sitting there... So you were right about Locke being captured after all. You were right when you insisted that we come here. So Locke secretly recorded this message and dropped it here so we'd hear it, huh? But this Frism, isn't it? I know Frisms are incredibly rare and precious items. So when I first saw that Frism, I assumed it must be yours, Locke. I thought perhaps Moon and her gang had taken it and recorded your voice. But at the same time, Muna and her gang are working with Kurem, and they have a whole frickin' slew of frisms back at their base. Then left it there to taunt us. But when I looked more closely at it, 
I realized that it looked a little different than your Frism. That meant the Frism had to belong to Muna's gang from the start. Even if Frisms are rare, it seemed possible that if Muna had one, she might have others too. I know I had to consider that possibility, and again, I thought it was a little weird that they mainly focused on showing, like, Locke only once, but otherwise the camera angle was off him. And even I didn't see that ex that coming. That was when Neon warned me that Muna might use the Frisms to set a trap for us. Hey, kind of like uh, what Amolga did. I wonder if that's going to have, like, a... I guess that was kind of foreshadowing in a way. And sure enough, she did just that. What a surprise. I was trying to be quite careful up there on that peak, but if it hadn't been for Neon's warning, I might have been caught myself, really. Wow. Thanks, Neon. And thanks, uh... Sorry, I don't even know your name yet. Oh, is that right? Pardon me, how rude of me not to introduce myself. Well, let me fix that at once. And now we're gonna get the... Oh no, it's Hydragon! My name is Hydragon. What? Hydragon? Yes, that's right. Isn't it a lovely name? Nice to meet you, sir. The pleasure's all mine. Neon, is it that Hydragon? What? Now that I look, he definitely does have three heads, so this is THE Hydragon? The violent monster that devours all of with its three heads and th that no one can stop? Hey, well, that's really scary. Huh? Are you talking about me? All right. I forgot that Locke still doesn't know. Oh dear, what a sticky situation. I'm not a bad guy, Locke, I promise. Write me on. Maybe if I explain to Locke the same way I explain to you. Do you think he'll understand? Well, explain it then. I'm completely lost. Of course we can, sir. I understand. I love that he calls Locke, sir. He's just so polite. Please listen. First of all, I am the voice of life. What? Kiram is... How could... How could Kiram do something like that? And Hydragun is the one who really called Neon to this world? To save it? We were never really sure, but I guess it's true. Neon is here to save our world. The Pokemon world. Yes. Neon is a human being. Because of that, I believe Neon will not be affected by the Bitter Cold. However, the Bitter Cold is being protected by Kyurem and Muna and the others. One second. Remember to stay hydrated, everybody. <laughs> Apparently, Hydragon is pronounced Hydragon. Which is, I think I've kind of sounded out like that. I just kind of cut off the Dre part. Getting past them all to destroy the bitter cold. It'll be extremely difficult. But even so, we must do something. If we don't, this world will be destroyed. Then we will. We'll do it somehow. Neon, let's find a way to destroy the bitter cold. I know I can't get that close to the bitter cold myself. So I may not be able to destroy it, but I can still be there to help you do it, Neon. And everyone in the True Hope will help too, I know it! Let's go! Back to the Great Glacier. Well, first back to Paradise so we can talk to everybody, and then to the Great Glacier. From what Neon has said, it sounds as if we will need the help of the researchers, Umbreon and Espeon, to get there. That is why the two of us were making our way to Paradise. Got it. I think that's the best plan, too. Let's go back to paradise. Then, let's resume our journey, shall we? Are you sure? What about your injuries? Thanks to this rest, I'm feeling much better. And besides, if we stay here too long, we may be spotted by our enemies. Got it. Then let's be on our way. Ooh! Is this a desert? That's right, sir. We have no choice but to go through this desert if we wish to return to paradise. The sun is very hot and punishing, but there is quite a bit of water here for a desert. I hope the journey won't be too trying, but there's not much to shield us from view. We'll be quite easy to spot as we pass through the dunes. 
I get it. So we've got to get through as fast as we can. We don't stop until night falls. Always nice to have the boy back. This is such good music. Da da da. Da da da. Power band for the boy. Here you go, Locke. Neon, I'm sorry. You got dragged in this mess because I got caught. So you're really here for something like that, huh, Neon? We've heard so many shocking things from Hydragon today. I'm honestly still pretty muddled up about it all. I really wish we could just sit down and talk about it right now, you and me, Neon. But right now we've got more pressing things to deal with. Let's just get ourselves out of this desert. I like that. I like that bit of dialogue. There's no other way back to paradise except to pass through this desert. Let's keep an eye out for our enemies and make our way through. But I really like that. I like that piece of dialogue. It's completely optional. I wish that we could just sit down, the two of us, and talk about this. I like that. We're going to get rid of that because I don't care about that. We just, why stop him from boosting when you can just kill him? I do like that he still got experience from the... from that system that there is. Oh, not you. Not you. You're going to burn me. Why is it an immediate burn? It's so bullshit. It shouldn't be contact like that. It just shouldn't. Sure, chance of it to happen, but get, it being guaranteed is stupid. And I don't care if it's like, oh, there actually is just a chance. Well, then it obviously isn't. It's happened every single time I hit that fucker. It's not a chance if it happens every single time. You know, never thought that I would see a... Flareon in a desert. And I don't know why. Yeah, this is one of my favorite tracks from this game. One of. There's too many to decide on for favorite. I feel like that's a thing in every single Mystery Dungeon game. Every single time, every single game just has immense options to choose from for the tracks there are. Because the music's always so good. Because, like, I really enjoy Farewell from uh, ex Rescue Team. I really enjoy the credits music from Rescue Team. Then, of course, there's also, um, blah, blah, blah. Runaway Fugitives. Very good. Very good song from Rescue Team as well. Then just so many songs from, like, Explorers. Huh, water. Odd that it is not colored like water. You'd think brown would be land, and blue would be water, but no. That's kind of amusing. Ah, I see this motherfucker kill him. <laughs> Just oasis after oasis after oasis. Ah, I can kill you nice and easy. 
How dare you have sand attack. How dare you have sand attack. With my skills, I can just slam you with the same attack over and over again, and eventually you'll die. I hate that he always puts Roar back on mi every single time. I understand it's probably because he's a guest star party member and not a main member, but still. And Sandstorm, darn. Why didn't you attack the motherfucker that's right next to us? Seriously, you, you, you used to turn to attack that guy? How dare you exist. How dare you belong? You don't belong in my world. And I missed a spark weight, darn. I was too busy to get out of there from that sandstorm, and it covered up the sparkly ever so slightly. This motherfucker kill him. Just gonna let him come to me and let the boy annihilate him. Apparently he doesn't get burned by him. Every single time I hit them, I get burned status. Everybody else, oh yeah, you just do this. Evil. You've been hit with gastro acid, which prevents your ability from working. I don't even know what my ability is. Like, genuinely. Lots of very rude. Time to die. I really hope that, like, Locke can learn many of these dragon moves. You've been bound by an enemy and unable to walk. You can still use items and moves, though. Can't even swap places with a man. I mean, sure, he can't move, but why can't I pick him up and move him? <laughs> ah, back to the frickin' sandstorm. Yeah, you guys go after the one that apparently doesn't burn you, and I'll go after this guy. Damn it, I was killing him. How dare you? Now you, you are someone I can kill. Your friend, they are someone I can also kill. Apparently, Hydrogen got bored and went the other way. Apparently, another Kranidos just desired to death. I wonder when we're gonna fight Muna. Because obviously, we're gonna have to fight Muna eventually. Like, in an actual boss fight. The question really is when. Why is why is signal beam super effective against everything? I swear it was also doing that like in platinum when I was playing. Is signal beam just the super effective against everything move? At least the one to get hit was Hydragon. By that long-range snipe of a signal beam. Why the music so good? Get crunched on. Crunch a tie, excuse me, Captain. I 
I keep forgetting to try out these rocks. Sparkly. I just, I really enjoy the vibes of this game, man. I just enjoy it so much. Again, it's that funny little thing where I'm happy that I initially never went out of my way to play this one. Granted, it also helps that... Like, uh... I, like, it took me forever to eventually get around to grabbing this game. So I never really thought to go out and play it on my own time. And eventually allowed me to do this, stream it live. Because a lot some games are very nice to, like, stream for the first time. There are some games where, I don't know, my brain doesn't like streaming them. Kind of like, uh, like, uh, Neo. I don't think I enjoy, would enjoy streaming Neo as a game all that much. But, like, the Ace Attorney trilogy and this game. Very, very fun. I think it's partly the fact that I get to voice act the characters. Because I'm like, ah, this is, like, it's, it's for a purpose. So my brain goes like, ah, we should do things differently than if we played it on my own. So it's just a nice, fun experience. Motherfucker. I smack you, then you smack me, then I smack you. Yeah, we're just gonna get away from that, Galvantula. Now I'm gonna deal with you. Electric Spider Boy, it's always you. Always you. La Vista. Ah, I finally caused a burn on somebody who wasn't me. Motherfucker. Can you kill the Larvista, finally? Jesus. Jesus. Oh, wait, no, it didn't even burn him. It just did something else. So once again, I have yet to see anybody but me get burned by those motherfuckers. I feel like I'm being targeted by the game. Like, maybe it's a safety feature where your partners can't activate, like, on-touch status effects. Because sometimes you can't control them. So they figured, oh, we'll just make it so it only affects the, the main character, maybe. And what move we want to learn today? Ring out? The more HP the enemy has, the more powerful this move gets. Huh. Seems situational. Could do... Gangbusters against, like, uh, bosses, maybe? It's just a normal attack, though. And all my other things, like, it's normal. All my attacks are physical. This is special. I'm interesting, but seems gimmicky. Kind of like Grass Knot. Heavier the enemy, the more damage you do. And a dual chop upgrade. Huzzah. Get schmick. Get schmick. Get smacked to death, Mr. Kling Clang. To death. And an all dodge orb. All dodge with all power up 
would be good for a boss fight. Oh, I just had the most horrific thought. What if Muna gets to Paradise before us? Like, if this game were longer, I would fear it a bit more with Fugitive Arc 2.0, where Muna decides to be like, oh, I, I lost them, so I'm going to go to Paradise before them and tell everyone they're going to destroy the world or something. Turn their friends on each other, which... Again, would fit the theming of the game quite a lot, considering it's all about, like, nihilism and everything. Again, I'm I'm still afraid for poor Lockboy. I'm still afraid that the game is going to do something mean to him. Not you. You motherfucker. I got one attack off without getting burned. It's a miracle. Damn it. Why do they keep why do they keep giving them fucking those moves? And why do you have an army coming for us? I would like to move, game. See, I forget what your typing is, but I should be able to annihilate you. You fool. Your rollout will never affect me. Nom nom that. We aren't getting it, but if we did get a Poco Mystery Dungeon movie in Studio Ghibli style, that would be amazing. The likelihood of that is very, very low. It would be very cool, though. a neat idea. Now, I wonder... Uh, I say I wonder, but, like, surely there's got to be, like, somebody out there who's drawn Pokemon in Studio Ghibli style. Somewhere out there. The mere thought seems very beautiful. Well, yeah, let's see. Do I have any fears of Muna and her gang getting to post town before us? Then again, it shouldn't. Uh, maybe uh, it depends. Because if Muna herself just goes. She might be able to convince them, but if she brings along any of her cronies, Espeon and Umbreon would be like, fuck you. It's getting quite dark, isn't it? If we don't get out of here soon, well, let's try to make it as far as we can. Ooh, they're shooting stars in the background. <sighs> the sun's completely set. Are we going to see floating lights and Hydragun is going to tell us what they are? We still haven't made it out of the desert? I believe we are almost through. At least, it doesn't seem anyone is after us any longer. Do you think perhaps there's no need to be in such a hurry? Maybe, but we, should, we wouldn't want to camp out here in a desert. Oh, you're probably right, sir. Well, I really do think we'll be out of the desert soon. Let's all do our best. <laughs> Chat says, oh hey, the age is 15 plus the cutscene. Oh boy. Brr, so cold. Doesn't it suddenly seem colder to anyone else? That's what deserts do. 
I believe you're right, sir. Perhaps it is just because we're in a desert. Deserts are hot during the day and cold at night, aren't they? And yet, it does seem colder than it should be. Oh, over there! What is it? I can see a small dune over there. Once we pass that dune, we should be out of the desert, I believe. Really? Yes, it's only a little farther. Let's push on. What was that? Feeling getting colder. Don't tell me Kirim's gonna roll about. Then again, I could see Muna going, Hey, Kirim, we fucked up. The team's they're getting away. What's that? That sound. What is? Motherfucker. Q. Cure him? On sight? And immediately froze the dude. You're just dead? Hydragon! Hydragon was. On sight? Neon! Run for it! What was it? Neon! R run! Neon! Uh. Just getting crushed to death? <laughs> no warning! Stop! Please stop! I'm begging you, please! Stop! Please, I'm begging you! Leave Neon alone! That's my best friend! So don't... Please, stop! Ah, you have lost all will to fight. Thus you shall be unable to change the future. If you have no will to fight, then I have no need to crush you. Just fucking killed Hydragon! You have had a narrow escape this night. Be grateful. Then again, I think Hydragon should be able to come back because they are the voice of life, but who knows? Wait. Wait just a moment. Excuse me? If things keep going this way, the world will end, won't it? So why? Kirim, why would you want that sort of future? It is true that I have chosen the path of destruction. And it is a destruction that will soon come to pass. It is only a matter of days now, before the bitter cold will stir. The world is finally rushing toward destruction. Its hour come round at last. What? Still, I shall protect this fate, and you wish to know why. It is because this world has grown cold. The world has grown cold? That is right. Most Pokemon living in this world are concerned only with themselves. Their distrust of one another, the focus on their own survival and success, thinking of no one else, the shadow of hopelessness and despair that darkens their view of the future, the negativity of each and every one of those Pokemon stagnated and spiraled. While no one paid any heed, it swelled greater and greater until at last, the bitter cold was born. The bitter cold has the power to destroy this cold world once and for all, and create a new world in its place. The bitter cold can do that? It is because I know this that I do not move to stop this world's destruction. This world is indeed freezing, and Hydragon's true form. Yes, even the voice of life is no different. The voice of life is the voice of all things in nature. It is a pretty tale. But in truth, all that means is that it is the voice of this world's selfish creatures, all wanting things their own way. It is nothing more than the self-serving will of this world. Have you seen the lights that rise into the sky? 
The lights that... Ah, you mean... We did see a light rising into the sky when we were in Post Town. But no one ar around us could say what those lights were. Those lights are humans once turned into Pokemon, returning to their own world. What? Other humans who were turned into Pokemon? Yes, the humans who were summoned by Hydreigon's message and became Pokemon. Or did you think your Neon was the only one? Countless humans have come here, and I've defeated those humans and sent them back to their human world. You defeated the humans who... No matter how fiercely you struggle, the future cannot be altered. Your fate has been decided since the moment you came into being. It is not something that can be changed. If Neon has no intention of trying to fight that future, I will allow one last human presence to remain in this world. However, if you and your allies still harbor the desire to save this world, then I will crush you with every weapon I possess. The mere scratches you have received this night will be nothing in comparison. Defy me, and you shall face the great pain that all your fellow humans have faced before being expelled from this world. Remember this warning. Engrave it upon your heart. Jesus! Phew. We survived. Had Neon, you! Neon! Neon! No, Neon's not even moving! W what should I do? If I don't do something quick, Neon might... But... What can I do? I don't... I don't know what to do! Ah, uh, there they are! Over there! No, not that way! They're over there! You sure? Oh, they really are there! Hey! You guys! Oh! Hey, you came for me? Amolga! And Dunsparce too! Hey, so you two are alright! You never came back, so we got really worried, you know! But how did you- No, we don't have time for this! Please, we've gotta get help! Neon needs help! God, you weren't kidding! Dunsparce, go get everyone over there here now! Yeah! We can't do anything for Neon here. We've gotta get some place where we can treat those wounds. Jesus! <laughs> Wait, is Zora Neon one of those lights or Eevee Neon? Probably not, because the bitter cold is on this one continent, and... Kirim was mostly talking about the humans brought by Hydreigon. So, humans brought over by, like, Gardevoir, or whatever power that was, or Zora Neon, who was born in the future, presumably, and went back in time, probably aren't the focus. Because, again, he's been focusing the humans brought by Hydreigon to oppose the bitter cold and the destruction of this world. So I doubt that other humans from past games have been affected just yet. Oh, did anyone see that? It looks like Neon's coming around. Everyone, it looks like Neon is waking up. Did you not get me a bad... Neon, you okay? It looks like you've recovered all right. Oh, thank goodness. Everyone is... But where are we? We carried you to a spot where we could get clean water. Everyone took turns caring for your wounds. You seemed to be quite in a bit of pain. And you slept so long that we were all growing worried. But thank goodness you've regained consciousness at last. I was going out of my mind with worry. What if you never woke up? What if you just floated away like the other humans? Just disappearing in a ball of light. That's right. Kiram attacked me and... I guess I was saved. All because of everyone here. Everyone cared for me. Hey, look, it's the thesis against nihilistic Kirim. Thank you, everyone. Everything's kind of fuzzy in my memory, but... 
I do remember what Kiram said to me. If everyone hadn't helped me, then I literally might have just turned into one of those balls of light and disappeared. I was petrified. I couldn't do anything by myself. If it weren't for everyone showing up like that. Which reminds me. How in the world did you guys find us just then? It seemed pretty fantastic now that I think about it. It probably would. It did seem like something out of a fantasy. You two were so late in making it back to town. We were worried, so we decided to go look for you. We were just about to set for Mount Kilonia when we heard a voice. A voice? Yeah, a voice telling us to go to the Scorching Desert. I know it sounds strange, but we heard it out of nowhere. Ah, Hydrogen! I presumably... It wasn't just then. All of us heard it. Just we, then we all that talked it over and we decided to believe in that voice and check out the desert instead. Once we got to the desert, we split up into groups. Dunsparce and I ended up together, of course. And while we were all searching, the sparkling light floated across our path like it wanted us to follow. And when we did, we spotted Locke. You got no idea how shocked we were. It was like little particles of sparkling rainbow light. It was really beautiful. Sparkling rainbow light? Neon, doesn't that sound like... When Kiram crushed Hydrogen's frozen form, it exploded into sparkling rainbow lights and disappeared. Maybe it really was Hydrogen who led everybody to us. Maybe it was the voice of life. You said the voice of life is the voice of everything in this world, didn't you? If that is truly the force that guided us, it would suggest that even after its physical form was destroyed, the voice of life might still be hoping that we will save this world. That may be so, but when you think about what Locke heard from Kirim, it's because of selfishness of all Pokémon that the world is growing cold, right? Even Hydrogen said it was Pokémon's negativity that created the bitter cold. So it's probably... <coughs> Remember to stay hydrated, my throat decided to give up on me. So it's probably true. And if it is true, then even if we manage to destroy the bitter cold, nothing's really gonna change, is it? The way the world is now, the strife among Pokémon won't stop. The future looks bleak, and everyone's feeling the same unease about it. As long as those negative emotions keep on stifling the world, even if we destroy the bitter cold, It'll simply be created again, don't you think? I kind of understand what Kira meant when he said the future can't be changed. What are you saying, Umbreon? Our world is going to get destroyed and you're just fine with that? Of course not. I just said I understand how Kira feels because there's nothing we can do. What's with that attitude? You talk like this doesn't even concern you. Well then, let me ask you, Amoga. Have you really never thought the same thing yourself? You've never thought this world is messed up beyond any hope? You've really never thought it'd be better to just start over from scratch? Even you must have felt that way sometimes, right? What? It's true. If it really is the bitter hearts of Pokémon causing the world to grow cold, then... We might not be able to change the fate of the world. We may not be able to prevent its destruction. Espeon! I don't want to give up. I don't want to, but... I also can't deny that there is something wrong with the world. If I try to think about how we could ever change things, or what it is I should do, I honestly have no idea where, I f where to find any answers. It might turn out that we just can't do a thing to change the way the world is. If that's true, I don't like to think it, but maybe there really is no way forward except for everything to start again. Frisian, You too?! I don't understand any of you! I don't get that at all! Locke, what do you think? Do you agree with all this? I... When I saw Kiram hurting Neon, I got really scared. Scared? Kiram warned us. He said that if Neon kept trying to save the world, he said he'd destroy Neon if that happened. If I don't want to have to watch Neon getting hurt, I don't want to have to watch Neon getting hurt again. I got scared. I lost my nerve. Locke. Locke. But, Neon, I'm sorry. I don't ever want to see you get hurt again, but... But even more than that, I just can't accept this. 
I don't really like how dark the world has become. I built paradise because I wanted friends I could trust. Friends who could trust me. And then you all, you all join me. Even if this world is full of Pokemon who deceive and lie to one another, I know I can at least depend on you all to understand me. And yet, now we should all be looking forward to the future. To hear that I'm gonna lose you all because of some stupid bad emotions. I can't accept that! Locke, what about you, Verizian? I know you lost faith in, faith in the world when you saw that letter from Keldeo. Is that still how you feel? Have you still not remembered how it feels to trust? This music. And you, Umbreon and Espeon, what do you think about being part of our team? Dunsparce? Amolka, how about you? I know you're all important to me. You are what I care about most in this world. Trusting one another. Everyone pitching in to help one another. That power that is noble enough to move even the hardest of hearts. That's what I've learned. From Neon. And from all of you. There's just no way I can accept losing you all now. <laughs> Locke. Locke. And Amulga too. I'm sorry. I think that's exactly right. Umbreon. Never mind what the rest of the world is like. We all still believe in one another. I nearly lost sight of that. And it's not like we are all that special. There must be other Pokemon out there who still trust one another. Not every Pokemon in the world can be looking for a fight. Umbreon. What we need to do is simply spread this feeling among other Pokemon. If the road to destruction was paved by the bad emotions of individual Pokemon, then if those Pokemon change their mindset, and faith in one another continues to spread, then we might be able to make this a better world. Espeon! That's right. Up until recently, I'd lost all faith in the world. But even I could change. There shouldn't be any reason why other Pokemon can't do the same. If everyone could just stay positive and hold on to hope... Verizian! I'm definitely not going to lose heart! That's right! There's no way I could give up now! Dunsparce! Amolga! Thanks, everyone. I knew you guys would get it. That's why we're the true hope! Locke, let's head back to Post Town. We'll get everyone together in Town Square and tell them everything. I'm sure if we tell them the truth, they'll just stand and work with us. You're right. Let's do it! It may be impossible to expect everyone to feel exactly like we do, but... Hopefully we can at least get some of the Pokémon to change after hearing the truth. Neon... I want to save this world, but none of us can get anywhere near the bitter cold. If we want to destroy the bitter cold, Neon, we need your strength. A human strength. But you might have to face Kirim again. Even knowing that, will you fight with us? Of course! Hydrogen summoned me here to save this world. And if I don't do that, this world will still disappear. And all of you too. That's why I've got to do it. Thanks, Neon. I feel bad asking you, after everything that's already happened. But you're the only one we can count on, Neon. Neon, thank you! You're really something, Neon. Even after getting knocked around like that, you're still ready to fight with us. There's no way we're gonna lose a fat heart of yours! I think it takes a lot of guts to stand up to cure him again. Thank you for taking this chance, Neon. Umbreon and I will be supporting you in any way we can. I'll have your back, Neon, no matter what comes. So you just focus on your battles without any worries, you know? You guys... This music is so good! Alright, let's, then let's get back to paradise. Kirim said that destruction isn't far off. So we've got to hurry back to Post Town and tell everyone the truth. If everyone can come together on this, we'll be able to fight for our future. It's not too late. We can still start over. That's why we've got to do our best and not give up. Yeah! That's right. We're not finished yet. Pokemon can still start over. That's what we believe. If, I'd say you take a violent seed because you're four times weak, if I remember. To ice. Oh, yeah, because I'm grass type. I'll also bring a vile seed to maybe throw at Kirim. <laughs> And so, the true up hurried back to paradise. 
By the time we arrived, night had fallen over the town. So we decided we would tell everyone in town what we'd learned the next day. And so the next morning... Morning, Neon. Today's the day we've got to tell everyone about the danger the world is in. I hope they understand. No, I'm sure they will. They've got to, right? Neon, let's do it! Because we have, like, at least we'll have some on our side. Morning, everyone. Good morning, Neon. Morning, Locke. Well, the time's finally come. Do your best, Locke. Yeah, I'm a little nervous. But I've got Neon on my side, so I'm going to go tell them everything. We'll be there watching. We're behind you all the way. I guess everyone will be shocked at first, but I have no doubt you'll convince them of the truth, Locke. You'll get across to them. Yeah, thanks. So we'll be going now. Good luck! This is the part where things go badly. Signora Swana! I came over to play! I'm stopping here! Give me something to eat, would ya? Huh? No customers today. Why'd there be customers when we're closed? Didn't you hear? Locke and Neon said they have something important to tell everyone. They want as many Pokemon as possible to come hear it. I was just about to head to the town square myself. That's why I'm closing up for the day. Now off with you. Hey, what? That's not nice. But what could be that important for us to hear? I'm kind of curious now. Maybe I'll go check it out too. Sorry, did I keep you waiting? Still no new ideas about what this important talk could be regarding? No idea. Ardenekin. We'd best go and find out I. Everyone coming along. Huh? Where's everybody wandering off to together? Something going on? There's apparently some important talk in the town square today. An important talk? What's that supposed to mean? No idea. What well, seems like we ought to go hear it anyway. You should probably come too if you know it's good for you. I, I guess I should. I like <laughs> these little moments. Oh, but will everyone believe us? A lot of Pokemon showed up, huh? Neon, hang in there, Locke. Everybody, listen up! Huh? Looks like it's starting. Everyone, I brought you here today to tell you about what's happening to our world. And about the danger our world is in. The world's in danger? Some of this may be shocking to hear, but... I need you all to just stay calm and listen, okay? First of all... What? The world is gonna disappear? This bit of cold thing is gonna keep getting bigger and then destroy the whole world? And worst of all, you say we created this bit of cold ourselves with our own negativity. What? Hey, wait! Everyone! I'm not done yet. You need to listen to the rest. It's true what a great threat is hanging over our world right now. But it's gonna be okay. We'll definitely find a way to beat this. How? Like I said, this bitter cold is being fed by the negative feelings of us Pokemon. So if everyone could just change their hearts instead, if everyone would trust one another, help one another, if you all looked forward to the future and filled your hearts with the wish to live, then we should be able to stop that bitter cold from growing any larger. And we could use that chance to go and destroy it. That's how we'll overcome this disaster. It's not too late for, late for us to change things. So please, everyone, let's ball pull together. If everyone just works together, I know we can do this. Let's give it our all. You, you say you'll destroy the bitter cold, but Kirim is guarding it, right? Can you actually beat him? Well, we'll just have to get to the bitter cold without having to fight Kirim. I don't know. Do you think that's gonna work? Yeah, I don't think things will go that easy. And besides, Kirim can see the future, can't he? If Kirim himself has seen the future of the world ending, doesn't that mean fate can't be changed? Then it's already too late. What? That's right. It's probably too late. That's what Kirim's saying, right? In the end, fate is just something that can't be changed. Everyone is... You... Why are you all so... 
that's it. If the world's just gonna end anyway, shouldn't we just do whatever we want? Ah, oh, good point, Blockhead. At least we'll enjoy the time we've got left. If we're all doomed anyway, might as well have a good time. Neon. Never mind standing against the danger. if They're just running from the truth. The world has been dark for so long, hope is all gone. Everyone's already feel already feels that trying hard won't get you anything. So they simply give up. But then what can we... Ah, an earthquake? No! Ugh! What is it? What's happening now? Maybe we'll see something from the hill? You guys! The Mirage! Something's happening in the Mirage! What in the world is that thing? Is that? Could it be the Great Glacier? But it's floating! Glaciers don't normally float in the air, do they? And besides, did the Great Glacier always look like that thing? I don't think it was all spiky like that before, right? It's the Glacial Palace. The Glacial Palace is lifted off. A Glacial Palace, you say? How could... Your head's full of nonsense! The bitter cold can make things around it levitate. I may be wrong, but... If the bitter cold's effect on gravity gets stronger as it gets bigger... Then it might now be strong enough... To make the entire glacial palace that contains it float into the air. Ah, uh, Are you fair certain? Look! We need the truth from you! That... It cannot be! It's just as Kiram said. It won't be long now before the end. Within days, the bitter cold will begin to move. The hour of destruction is coming. Or so Kiram said. What? When the bitter cold begins to move, the world is gonna be destroyed? You guys, hold on. No! The world is... The world is... It's all over! Ah! Everyone... Oh, honestly, it's always the ones that act the toughest, who lose every last bit of backbone when it is truly needed. What a pathetic bunch. Though, I suppose you can't blame them. After all, the world is ending. But, I'm on your side at least. I'll always be behind you. So don't give up. Give it all you have. Swana, thank you. Thank you so much. However, the real question is what you do now. Honestly, no idea. So in the end, Swana was the only one who even stayed. We're gonna be fighting an uphill battle on this one. I wonder how we can get them to understand. I'm sorry, everybody. I tried to explain it all, but... It looks like I failed. It's my fault. Th that's not true. I think you did real good. That's right. It wasn't your fault they didn't listen, Locke. But still, why can't they just try? Just a little. Yeah, maybe the world could be ending, but if you just give up without trying, how's that gonna help? I think everyone just knows that things don't always work out in the real world. No matter how hard you try, things can't always be fixed. And the simple act of trying sometimes makes things worse. I think everyone has had such experiences. And when you experience that kind of letdown again and again, then after a while, whenever anything happens, you find yourself thinking, trying just makes everything hurt worse. What's the point of trying, then? Deciding from the very start that there's nothing you can do is easier. It hurts less. God, if that ain't a mood. All those experiences of failure and disappointment, they put the brakes on any positive thought you might have. Negativity gets so deep into your heart, and it's difficult to get it out again. Yeah, it's gotta be tough to change something that's so ingrained in someone. Well, if this place is no good, then maybe we could try another town. No, I thought that might work, but if every Pokemon in the world has the same feelings, then even if we go somewhere else, it'll probably end, the same, uh, end up the same in the end, huh? I guess... Maybe it really just is impossible to change another Pokemon's heart. Then all we can do is sit here and wait for the end. 
The fact that Swanum is the only one and only Pokemon to stand by us, it sure is a lonely feeling, huh? But pardon the intrusion. Um, can I come in? Go right ahead. What's you? Lillipup, what's happened? Um, you see, about how I got scared and ran away when we were up on the hill? I'm sorry, but I really don't want our world to disappear. I don't want Swadlone and my granddad to disappear. I still want to live. I still want to fight. So please tell me. I want to do something, but what should I do? Lillipop. Lillipop, you. It wasn't for nothing. Even if all the Pokemon around him were giving up, it was still a Pokemon who heard Locke's pleas. Right here. This is this this music's nice. You want to know what you need to do? Be brave. Have the courage to stand up and face whatever the future may bring you. Be brave. Right. I've just got to be brave. Thanks, Mr. Locke. Granddad. Everyone! True hope. I'm embarrassed in that's fair certain. The way I lost my head and ran. That we burn there had more sense than me, and there's no excuse. I've lived a good long life indeed. Long enough that seeing it end doesn't it worry much. Oh, this song's so good. Whether or not I disappear, that shouldn't it matter a whit. But these were bands. The little ones still have long lives ahead of them. Fair their sex. I reckon it's my duty to dive right into this fight. Oh dear. I am frightened to stand up against such a future, but I am also a mother. When I think of the children, when I think that they might lose their future, there's simply no way I can give up. There may be no too many Pokemon in this world who think only of themselves. But even if you only care about yourself, isn't it obvious what has to be done? Of course I'll help. I'll do everything I can. God, I'm getting choked up. Levany, Swana, you too. Looks like it was a bit early to give up on the world. Now if we can just spread this feeling among the other Pokemon, we can do it. If everyone just stands together, if we can just stand up to the future without giving in to despair. You'll just need the others to feel the same way as we do, I. Then I'll also do my part to persuade the others to have hope. Yeah. If you do that, then, all of the true hope. We will storm the glacial palace and destroy the bitter cold. Anyone left behind should try to persuade more Pokemon to believe in us. Even one. We've got to go around convincing everyone to stay positive about the future. And if we do that... Ah! What's wrong, Locke? I'd forgotten. The glacial palace is floating up in the sky now. That's right. We can't just walk there if it's in the sky. How are you going to get up there? You know, Locke, we've been thinking about that. It won't be easy, that's for sure. We've already considered using the intercards, of course. But with our knowledge of the intercards, we honestly aren't capable of that yet. Still, Espion and I have talked it over, and there might just be a chance chance? For what? I'm not sure yet, and this is only what you might call intuition, but I think it's worth following up on. After all, we still haven't thought of any other way to get there. If there's even a small chance that Espeon's right, then I think we need to risk it. Okay, I'm all for it. Good. Then Espeon and I will start trying to get a way to reach the... We'll start trying to find a way to reach the Glacier Palace. But we'll run out of time if we wait for us to make it back before setting out. So let's plan to meet up somewhere in the middle. We'll give you the intercards that got us to the glac Great Glacier before. Umbreon and Espeon gave the intercards to Locke. You've seen us summon the Magnicate enough times to wing it, haven't you? Uh, sure. Probably. Use the cards to reach the Great Glacier. We'll meet you there. Let's go, Espeon. Let's all do our best.
seems mighty rash to be setting off in the dark and night like this. But I suppose we've bigger concerns, I. Eh? Do you think we should head out at the once too? No, let's wait for morning. We want to be sure we're fully prepared. It seems like Umbreon and Espeon were prepared already for where they're going. They're both pretty light travelers, you know. But we have Neon with us, so we need to be ready. But we can't forget that Kyurem might attack us if we're traveling with Neon. We better be ready for anything. Got it. Then we set out tomorrow. I'm going too. And me. I... I'll be staying here. Dunsparce. No, Amelga. I'm not afraid. Not this time. If there was nothing I could do here, I would definitely go with you all. But convincing the other Pokemon to keep hope is an important job right now, isn't it? I think it's going to take time for the message to spread. So we have to reach as many Pokemon as we can. As quickly as possible. That's why I'm going to stay here this time and do what I can. Dunsparce. All right. We understand, Dunsparce. You do your best to persuade everyone else to believe in the future. I will. All right. Then everybody, tomorrow's the day. Let's do it. Yeah. And I believe that that will be a good stopping point for now. Much earlier than other streams, but uh, there's about like, uh, at the start of this stream, there was like three to six hours worth of story left. And uh, since we went for about two and a half hours, there's about three-ish, three and a half to four hours left of story left, which we can do next time on Saturday and see things through. The story is really ramping up and I am loving it. I got teary-eyed. My throat was choking up there. Again, once more. It was a, a weird mixture of voice acting stopping me from crying, but at the same time kind of voicing the characters also kind of making it worse. Yeah, I am loving this. Just completely shocking for Hydra again to just get utterly annihilated. And all but on screen attempted murder. But I am loving I am loving this story. I just wish that the story was a bit more just a little bit more. More of those moments. More moments of the characters, but I like it. For a if it has to be condensed this way, I'm happy they condensed it the way they did. I'm glad that, like, the main Pokemon are a part of the team. We can take them with us. It's just, this is great. <laughs> Chat says, they killed my boy. <laughs> Kids game, by the way. Talking about nihilism, the growing darkness of people's hearts, and how maybe the world deserves to be destroyed so we can start again. <laughs> Kids game. Then again... Explores a sky with the, like, even if it kills you, you should save the world. And then kind of flipping that on its head with, like, you should still fight to save the world. Even if, like, somebody says, like, ah, if you kill yourself, the world will be saved. Again, frequent use of the word disappear. Also, I kind of find it hilarious in a dark way that... Like, they can't just say that Kiram killed all the humans. They're like, oh yeah, he sent them back to the human world. Via murder. <laughs> which is kind of interesting. That, which kind of also uh, implies that there is a difference between, like, the other humans and uh, the humans summoned by Hydrogen. Because... The rescue team protagonist fucking dies. It's only implied, but considering that you're caught up in the blast wave of the meteor and dragged through the spirit world, it is implied that you and the partner die in rescue team. I'm going to have to note that down for a one-shot. That I idea I have. Hmm. But yeah, meanwhile, these humans, when they die, then again, it could also be that Kiram is killing them in a certain way to send them back to the human world. So who knows? Or it could just be a balderization. Maybe in, maybe in the Japanese translation, the humans just fucking die. 
fair. I am loving this story. I am loving these characters. My only complaint so far is I wish that there was more. We're coming up on the end. I just wish that there was more. It's definitely interesting because Explorers had a ramp up where there was a lot of guild stuff before Grovile showed up and then a decent amount of guild stuff still going before Dusk Noir showed up and the Time Gear plot kicked off. So it's like interesting that this one has basically been from Jump 1 all about the bitter cold and it's just like interweaving the important things together. But I'm very, very much liking it. Again, only complaint so far that sticks out in my mind is I wish that there was more story. Especially sad because the post game is going to be short too. Oh well. But, once again, thank you very much for watching. We will be continuing our adventures and finishing up the main story probably on Saturday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Because I'm trying to stream every day, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. But if you want more from me, my link tree, linktr.ee slash neonicywings, or with direct links to my link tree and bios, descriptions, and link places of all the various sites. And the link tree holds links to all the things that I do, like edited content YouTube videos. I need to work on them. Mm. As well as, like, uh, the streams on Twitch and YouTube, the recordings of these streams up on the YouTube stream channel, as well as art that I make, like my little character in the corner. I need to draw more. Me world is mean. Same thing with my writing. Links to my writing is also in my link tree. I'm trying to make more progress, but I am assaulted by new ideas and brain is like, ah, don't make story progress because brain is a coward. And uh, finally, uh, my Patreon is also linked in the link tree for the kind folks who are affluent enough to be able to spare a few dollary dues my way. It's just a little donation drop bucket because I... It would be difficult for Brain to wrangle all the things I want to do as well as provide tangible rewards for people because Brain is a bitch. Maybe someday. Maybe someday I'll provide good things there. <laughs> See you then. Stay hydrated. Exactly. But yeah. Linktree has all the things I do. YouTube, streams, art, writing, and more. And next time, we'll see about ending Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity main story. And see if the game can get me to cry. I hope it does. So yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Be true, be you, be happy. But most importantly, stay kind and stay hydrated. And I will see you dudes next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>